So in the last video, we were able to work with our modules, how we can import them, how we can export them, and so on and so forth. So in this video, I want us to perform a post request, okay? But before we do that, I want to do some cleanup. Right here, I can see I am exporting to do twice. So I don't need to include this export here. And then I'll come to my package.json file and remove this configuration which I had included in the last video. Because I'll be using require, this configuration will draw an error in my application. But if you are using the import statement, make sure this configuration is here. So for me, I'll just remove it, okay? And now our app should run without errors. Let me see. Uh, it's restarting and yeah, server running on port 5000 and MongoDB connection established. So the next thing that I want us to do is to install a package that we will need to configure. So I have just opened the terminal here and all you need to do is to say npm i course. And this course stands for cross origin resource sharing. It allows us to access our endpoints from a different domain. For example, we'll be hosting our React app from a different domain and uh, this course will allow us to access our endpoints from different domain, okay? So in my index.js file, I will import this course after just hitting enter so that it installs as we proceed. So right here, how we will import this package is by saying const course will be equal to require and then course. And how we configure this one is by using a method, a variable in our app called use. So right here, I'll say app.use. And then I pass in course here. And course is now a middleware. Every time we use app.use, you'll know that we are now using a middleware function. And a middleware function simply adds functionality to our application. It is added to the uh, request pipeline and it have access to this request. It have access to response and it have access to a method called next, okay? And next allows the middleware to pass functionality to the next middleware. So it can access request and change the body of the request. It can send something to the client and thus terminating the, the process and it can pass functionality to the next middleware function, okay? Later on, we'll be learning more about middleware functions when creating our own middleware function, okay? So for now, don't worry too much about it. Just know that it adds functionality to our application and it have access to request, response, and next. The next thing that we will do is to configure JSON. So right here, I'll say app.use and how we configure JSON in our application is by using express, okay? So how we do that is by saying express dot json and then we invoke it and now this is a middleware function and what this middleware function will allow us to do is to pass json in the request object okay because we'll be working with json data and that will allow us to pass json in the body of the request okay now that we have configured these two we will go to the root of the application and add a new folder called routes. And this will help us to create all our endpoints in this routes folder. We will add a new file in this folder called todos. And in this file is where we will have all our todos endpoints. Okay. And that way our index.js will remain to be simple and easy to read so in our to do's.js i'll open this the first thing that we need to do is to import our to do's model so 
this model that we created here and exported it is what we need to use in this todos.js file. I will say const to do. So as I told you before, here we are extracting the todos property from the exports object, which is a variable in a global object called module. Okay. And then we get this from require. We need to go to the models folder. So two dots and a slash. We go to models stroke to do. The next thing that we need to do is to import express. So here I'll say const express will be equal to require express. Aria, we used express here to create our main app. So if I come to index.js, you'll see that we imported express this way and then used it to create our main app. And we can use the same same uh, procedure, but right now we'll be creating a mini app to help us work with our routes. So in our todos.js file, I will say right here, const router will be equal to express dot router. Now this is a router class that is available in express and we invoke it. So this way we are creating an instance of our router and this instance is now an object representing a mini application and this mini app we can use it to create our endpoints. So at the bottom here we can create an endpoint. So router dot post and now this will handle the post requests. The first parameter is a path and then the second parameter is a callback function. And this callback function have access to request and response. And then, so in here, we'll be creating a document using our model, okay? And this document is simply an object, okay? So right here, I can say red to do. So this is how we define a variable in JavaScript using let. And then we say is equals to new to do. And this to do is our model. And as I told you before, this to do is a class. And when we use the new keyword here, we are now making it to be a constructor to create our object okay and now right here we can invoke it and pass several properties inside here as an object and these properties are similar properties to what we included in our to do schema so as you can see the to do schema was uh, shaping our document it was giving us a structure of how our document will look like, okay? So we should have a property called name, author, UID is complete and date. So in our to-dos here, I'll say name will be equal to request. And then we tap dot body dot name, okay? So this is how we access the properties that we send in form of json from our request so request.body.name we can extract all our properties the name the other from the request body this way okay so at the top here i will extract the properties this is how we do it you can do this way if you want but an alternative way you can extract the properties just like this so right here i'll say const I include these curly brackets to extract the properties. We'll be extracting the name from request.body. We'll be extracting the author. We'll be extracting is complete. Complete. And then uh, we'll be extracting the date and the UID. So they don't have to be in order, okay? You can use any order you want. And then, uh, this will be coming from request dot body and we don't now need to keep repeating request dot body 
when adding our properties we can simply say our name will be equal to name and then even a better implementation you can see the key here and the value are the same when key and values are the same you can use only name so now we can just say name so this is now a better implementation because all we need to do is to pass all these other properties in here i'll copy this and then paste here and with this we are now creating a to do's a document okay now this is a document which will contain all these properties once we send a request from the client the next step is saving this document to the database how we do that is that uh, this to do have a method called save so we can say to do dot save and when we invoke this method our document will be saved to the database but this is now an asynchronous request it will take some time to process and then it will return a promise to us so for that we can either use async await or we can use the dot then method so i'll start by using the dot then method here so to do dot save you can tap a dot then method and then in here we will get a to do once this is complete a response will be given to us and that response is our to do document so right here we'll get a to do and then we use an arrow function and we can do something in here with this to do for example we can now send this to do to the client by using res dot send and we pass the to do here as simple as that and then we can tap a dot catch method here so right here you can say dot catch we have an error object we have access to an error object here and then we use an arrow function and we can log this error to the console this way console dot log and then we say error dot message this way okay so we save the document it takes some time to process once it's done it returns a to do we send this to do to the client if there is an error we catch the error and drop the error to the console or alternatively you can send this error to the client so the other way of doing this is by using async await so what i'll do is that i'll remove all this code you can use this method if you want but i remove it and then using async await right here we'll be getting a promise so we await it so we will say await and store this promise in a to do we are here define this as a variable so we can reuse it here to do will be equal to await to do dot save and now our to do will be a variable in this variable and then the next step uh, we will send a response to the client res dot send and we pass our to do in here but when using await we need to wrap our function with async so you can see this is our callback function so we can wrap it with async here this way okay so async await and then how do we handle the errors in the dot then method we used a dot catch to catch the errors in this one we use the try and catch block okay so right here we can try and then in here we include this code and then right here we can catch an error if there is any so right here we have access to the error object and then we can log it to the console if we want so we, we will log it to the console and also we can send an error to the client so right here we'll say res dot status and this with this we can set the status of the request and we'll be using the status 500 which means that a server error occurred and then we can send a message to the client so dot send and we include the message here error dot message 
and we can also log the error to the console console dot log uh, error dot message this way and when i save this file you'll see that i am using prettier and it will auto format the code for me and then i can include a spacing here for better readability so just a quick recap we are extracting our properties here from request.body we are creating a document using the the to do model and passing these properties inside this model and then we are using a try and catch block to handle the errors and then we are saving our to do document to the to the database using to do.save and sending the response to the client and then in our errors we are sending an error message to the client and a status of 500 meaning that this is a server error and then we are logging also the error to the console now we need to use this file in our index.js so at the bottom here we need to export it so i'll say module dot exports in the last video we learned more about exports and we saw this grobo object called module and it have a property called exports and we can by default uh, set this one to router and now here we are exporting our mini app from this module and our router have our endpoint which is this one here okay so let's go to index.js and import this file right here so uh, at the top I will say const to do will be equal to require we will go to the routes stroke to do that way and then uh, just at the bottom here after this middlewares I will include app dot use okay because now this is acting as a middleware because of our mini app so if i come to the to do's here we defined our mini app here and this mini app is like a middleware function so we should use app.use and then the first parameter here we can pass in the path okay the path of our to do's endpoint i want us to be stroke api stroke to do's and then the path that we included here in our todos.js file here this path will be automatically added at the end here okay so if you use a stroke something in our todos here stroke example now our endpoint will be localhost 5000 stroke api stroke todos stroke examples but for now it will be localhost 5000 stroke api stroke to do okay and then the second parameter is now our mini app so to do and this is how we do it and we have just created uh, a post endpoint to handle our post requests so in the next video we are going to test this endpoint using postman okay so first of all i'll come back to my uh, server here and see if everything runs server running on port 5000 and mongodb connection established so everything is working and uh, our course was successfully installed here make sure yours is also successfully installed and i can cancel this one so i'll see you next where we'll be testing this endpoint and see if everything now works okay